Rush Limbaugh. Ladies and gentlemen, Mark Stein. Yes, America's Anchorman is away today, and this is your undocumented Anchorman, Mark Stein, sitting in. No supporting paperwork whatsoever, coming to you live from Ice Station EIB in far northern New Hampshire. I just uh, just came galloping across the Canadian border this morning on Anne Romney's uh, horse. I, I kidnapped it at a, uh, at a dress on the ship. Rush will be back on uh, Monday. Twelve people dead, uh, 38 injured at a screening of The Dark Knight Rises, the new Batman movie, a midnight screening in Aurora, Colorado uh, last night. Uh, about 20 minutes into the movie, a man walks through the exit door. He is wearing some kind of mask on his head, and he tosses what appear to be smoke canisters, and most of the audience assume that this is part of the show. These midnight screenings on the Thursday night before the official Friday opening uh, are, are uh, part of the general hype and publicity for big movies. This is a big movie. It's opening on 4,000 screens uh, this weekend, and they do the, this kind of thing. I went to see... Uh, that I think it was the first Mission Impossible movie at a, at a, a, a broken-down little theatre in, uh, in Plymouth, New Hampshire. And even there, on the first performance, they had, uh, they had men in black polonex, like rather camp versions of Tom Cruise, rappelling down the uh, side of the movie theatre in Main Street, Plymouth, New Hampshire. So movie theatres, the big movie theatres, put on a lot of this kind of thing. So you're sitting there 20 minutes into the movie. I haven't seen The Dark Knight Rises. I saw the... Uh, last uh, Dark Knight movie, the one with Heath Ledger as the Joker. A lot of lot of violence in that. That big about 20 minutes in, I figure we'd still be probably just about the end of that big opening scene uh, where the Joker uh, is pulling off that bank robbery. Uh, there's a lot of that heightened movie violence in it. The, that uh, that kind of visceral thrill violence where cars flip over. People die in, in strange, lurid ways. But you're watching it on a giant screen. They die large. Uh, there's there's a, a kind of heightened reality to it. So if about 20 minutes in, on the, on the first night, on this super sneak midnight preview that you managed to get into, uh, a guy comes through one of the exit doors and he seems to be wearing a mask. And he tosses a couple of gas canisters, smoke canisters, into the crowd. You'd think it was some kind of promotional thing. And then he began shooting. And the midnight showing of this violent R-rated movie uh, apparently included uh, a, a relatively large number of grade school children, and in fact preschool children, including a three-month-old baby who is among the injured. Uh, Twelve people are dead. A man is in custody. His name is James Holmes. He is described as a six-foot-three white male, age 24 years old. Uh, Warner Brothers has cancelled the Paris premiere of the movie, and uh, President Obama uh, has suspended campaign events uh, for today, as has Mitt Romney. Uh, I believe the Romney campaign has also pulled its ads off the air. Uh, in Colorado. These, these seem slightly strange reactions to me, I have to say. Uh, I gather the, the official position is that at a time of uh, uh, what both uh, candidates call the tragedy, it's not, by the way, it's not a tragedy, it's an, it's an outrage, it's a criminal act, it's a criminal act of mass murder, and uh, there, there wasn't quite enough uh, emphasis on that in either man's statement from my point of view. It's not a tragedy. A tragedy is like a tsunami or a hurricane or whatever. This isn't a tragedy. Uh, both men have suspended their campaigns to add, taking ads off the air. The, the, the decision not to politicize the event, in a sense, uh, becomes itself political. The president ostentatiously returning to Washington uh, as if this uh, falls within his jurisdiction. It doesn't really. Uh, he was assured in the early hours of the morning that there's no terrorist connection. It's a local law enforcement matter. Uh, for the police department of Aurora, Colorado. Nevertheless, he, he, he wants to be seen uh, to be uh, reacting to it, and so he has gone back to Washington, and Mitt Romney has, uh, has pulled ads off the air. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a funny business when something like this happens. Uh, 
because it's not political at all. And so for a political show like this, it's not something that uh, would normally fall within our remit. I mentioned the tsunami earlier. The, you remember the big tsunami five or six years ago. Uh, I'm in the opinion business, and a, a tsunami doesn't seem the sort of thing you, you're required to have an opinion on. I mean, nobody's pro-tsunami. Uh, nobody's in favor of the, the something sweeping in and devastating uh, large uh, amounts of property and, uh, and, and um, having a devastating effect and killing large numbers of people. But within a couple of days, everybody had an opinion of it, on it because it had become political. Uh, some United Nations guy stood up and started complaining uh, about the American reaction. The only people actually saving lives at that point it was not the UN guy. The UN guy was back in New York holding press conferences. The only people on the ground was a, was a U.S. carrier, uh, task force, and the Royal Australian Navy. They were the only people saving lives and restoring the water supply and everything. And uh, but for the UN guy, the UN guy decided a tsunami is something you have to have an opinion on. And his opinion was that Americans were being stingy because they weren't giving enough money to the UN. So eventually, everything becomes political. Nobody is pro-tsunami. Nobody is pro-gunning down large numbers of people at movie theaters. Uh, but there is a rush to politicize these things. Only one kind of event, by the way, not all these kinds of events. If you're, say, a major in the United States military, and you have Soldier of Allah on your business card, and you uh, give a PowerPoint presentation uh, on how jihad is, uh, an, uh, is an entirely reasonable reaction, uh, and uh, killing American soldiers is an entirely legitimate business. And then you wind up on a table at an American military base gunning down large numbers of people while, while shooting Allahu Akbar. That has no political significance whatsoever. That's simply an isolated one-off from some crazy guy. All jihad is local. That's just a one crazy isolated incident of no broader significance whatsoever. But if you are Jared Lochner in the Gamby Giffords thing, in, uh, in Arizona. Or if you are James Holmes, whoever he is, a 24-year-old guy, a uh, disturbed guy, uh, takes, the, uh, takes a small armory, takes more firepower than the average European Union army can muster at short notice, and decides to go and gun down a movie theater, unlike Major Hassan, that is not local, that is not specific, that is not a one-off. It, uh, it's got to be something bigger than that. And what it's got to be is it's Tea Party, it's talk radio. So Brian Ross of ABC News this morning tells uh, Good Morning American view, Good Morning America viewers uh, that there was a James Holmes listed at a Colorado Tea Party site. And, uh, and, and, by, and George Stephanopoulos, who uh, hosts Good Morning America, if you wonder what George has been doing the last few years, he, he's apparently a host on uh, Good Morning America. Uh, and Stephanopoulos says, I'm going to go to Brian Ross. You've been investigating the background of Jim Holmes here. You found something that might be significant. And Brian Ross says, there's a Jim Holmes of Aurora, Colorado. Uh, he's got a page on the Colorado Tea Party site as well, talking about him joining the Tea Party last year. Brian Ross, uh, who has been, according to George Stephanopoulos, doing some investigating. He hasn't been investigating. He went uh, what a, your average seven-year-old boy could do. He went on Twitter and he Googled. And he came up with a uh, Jim Holmes in Aurora, Colorado. Jim Holmes, that's, that's, uh, that's an exotic name, isn't it? Uh, there can't possibly be many people called Jim Holmes in Colorado. I mean, it's not a common name like Slobodan Milosevic or Cruz Bustamante, is it? It's a perfectly common... Probably a few more unlisted. One of them has already gone on Facebook to say, please, look, don't... Don't pester me. I'm I'm not the uh, I'm not the mass murderer. My my girlfriend went to a job interview uh, today, and she was already asked about why she's uh, dating a serial killer. I'm not that James Holmes. But to Brian Ross of ABC News, it doesn't matter. So Brian Ross and James Stephanopoulos go on national television and announce, with nothing to go on, that uh, that uh, Jim Holmes, the guy who killed these people, apparently kill these people in Colorado, uh, has uh, jo joined the Tea Party last year. So Tea Party guy guns people. Now, ABC News has now been forced to apologize, because the James Holmes who is in custody is 24. 
And the James Holmes who joined the Tea Party is a guy, a middle-aged guy. He looks like he's in his 50s. Uh, he, in fact, appears to be younger than the mother of the James Holmes who is in custody. So that is, that is the fantastic investigative job that Brian Ross has done on ABC News. There's all kinds of stories floating out there, but we don't really know. We, in the end, we don't know anything about this 24-year-old guy. He's just in custody. But don't let that stop you. Jay, Brian Ross and George Stephanopoulos from going out there and blaming it on the, uh, on the Tea Party guy. George Stephanopoulos, by the way, <laughs> has a long history on this kind of thing. He's the one who, uh, back in the 90s with Timothy McVeigh, uh, was part of the uh, excellent job that the Clinton administration did, uh, hanging Timothy McVeigh around uh, talk. Uh, radio, if you remember, in, in, the, in the 90s. And uh, a couple of years later, uh, her, uh, the, the Princess of Wales, Diana Princess of Wales, dies in a car crash in Paris, and uh, Tony Blair finds himself dealing, having to deal with it uh, uh, back in Britain. And George Stephanopoulos, Stephanopoulos bumps into uh, Christopher Hitchens, the commentator, uh, in their lobby of their apartment building. Uh, Christopher Hitchens died a, a few months ago, but he used to tell this story uh, in a very droll way because he thought it was an excellent example of how these guys looked at things. Uh, Tony Blair had been going on TV and calling uh, the late uh, Diana, Princess of Wales, the People's Princess and all this kind of thing. And George Stephanopoulos uh, goes up to Christopher Hitchens and says, hey, is, isn't Tony Blair doing a great job with Diana? This is his Oklahoma City. This is his Oklahoma City. And as Christopher Hitchens used to say, that's how these guys look at things. And so almost two decades later, after Oklahoma, almost two decades after Oklahoma City, George Stephanopoulos is on television at ABC News, and this is still how he looks at things. So he gets Brian Ross, his so-called investigative, so-called journalist, to go out there and, uh, and claim that a 55-year-old member of the Tea Party with the highly exotic name of James Holmes is in fact the same person as the 24-year-old James Holmes who gunned down people in a Colorado movie theatre. Uh, this is the point, that they can't wait, certain events they can't wait to politicise. Uh, whereas some other ones, guy standing on the table screaming Allahu Akbar, pay no attention to that. Allahu Akbar is Arabic for nothing to see here. Don't worry about it. You don't have to think about it at all. Uh, and that's the way it's going to be. Uh, so we'll talk about that today, but it is the end of the week, and you know what that means. Live from my station EIB, it's open live.